Hey guys, Bike here, and I'm back again with another Last Epoch video. This one's going to be about the good old Void Cleave Racing Strike Void Knight build. Uh, you guys might be a little confused if you haven't been watching the streams for the past couple weeks. Uh, you might be going, Bike, haven't you done like two build guide videos on this build? And the answer is yes, I have. And this one... Yes, it is a bit of a build guide, but it, it's not it's gonna it's not gonna be like our standard build guides where I go through and explain everything. This one I wanted to try out Void Cleave Racing Strike here in Last Epoch in Cycle One and see does it still hold up? And the answer is yes. I, I've made a few adjustments. I've incorporated a few new items that got added into the game. Uh, for the most part, it still kind of looks the same. So if you've already played this build, if you've already seen my previous build guides, then there might not be as much information here for you. Nonetheless, there will be a build planner in the description down below. With all that being said, let's go ahead, jump into the video. We'll uh, jump into the game. We'll check out some gameplay we'll go over what i've done hopefully this video won't be too long i i'm just gonna go, be going over what i did a little bit different compared to the other ones let's get going all right and here we are back in the game so i'm gonna have some gameplay playing uh, up ahead i i was pleasantly surprised with uh void cleave erasing strike i mean i knew it was strong i've had some people who like cycle started with it after seeing my build guides that I published on it. They tried it out at the start of it, said it was working out really great, but I had to see for myself and uh, we, we pushed the build. We uh, pushed to about 611 corruption. That's what we're doing here in the gameplay above. We uh, we also went and took out T4 Jewelry. It was, it was a little hard <laughs> just because, you know, we don't have ward and the build likes to move and T4 Jewelry, you can't really move around a whole lot, but we took down T4 Jewelry made it to 611 corruption just been having a blast uh i really like the setup here with the changes that have been made and everything that you know the adjustments that were made to the build and um anyway with all that being said let's go ahead take a look at what we got all right so here we go if you see my previous videos on uh i should say let's go ahead and take a look at the gear there we go a nice little segue right there so if you see my previous videos i am a big fan of titan heart in this build i still think titan heart is probably the best one to use if you can get it with more than one lp i if you've been here for the live streams you've probably heard me complaining I have not been able to find a 2LP Titan Heart. Look, I found a 2LP Anchor. It's a 0.65% drop rate from Admiral Harton in the Fall of the Empire timeline. I found a 2LP one, slammed it, and got exactly what I wanted, Void Cleave and Health onto that BZ, and I still can't find a 2LP Titan Heart. I know. So, I would say... A 2 LP or more Titan Heart would be what you're looking for. You're going to want to try to get, like, Vitality or Strength. If you're using Titan Heart, probably Strength, and then increased Health on there. So you're looking for, like, a T6, T7 uh, Strength, and then a T5 Percentage Health. Kind of a tall order, you know, that's only 2 LP, and you, know, you got 4 stats to try and get onto there, but you know, if I if I could do it with an anchor, I know it's possible, if you could find a 2 LP Titan Heart. So, what I started doing recently is I started using this Champion Regalia, and I would say Champion Regalia is a really good fit for the build. You're losing out on the 15% less damage taken while wielding a 2 handed melee weapon, but the amount of armor you get, plus you just, you're going to be finding these way more common. You get the damage mitigation, uh, the, the armor applies to dots mitigation. You get a huge amount of armor. Uh, ideally, you'd probably want percentage health on here uh, as your exalted affix, flat health, and then strength and vitality. That'll give you a nice little mix. Those both boost the damage of void cleave and a racing strike on top of the fact that they just give you health they give you armor uh if for whatever reason you needed to pick one over the other and you're using champion regalia 
vitality you would want to take vitality and then you can fit something else on there you can fit like extra void damage or maybe you want to add a little bit more to your erasing strike there you go so this was the biggest change right here was uh was going over to champion regalia from titan heart assuming you're like me and you can't find anything <laughs> Uh, other than that, everything's still pretty standard. Um, I would say Le Leonines obviously is another change, but I, I think we kind of saw this one coming. Massive amount of armor. 78% reduced bonus damage taken from critical strikes. I'm not running critical strikes, uh, critical strike avoidance. I'm only running the damage reduction from critical strikes on Leonines. I think it offers enough that you can just go with that. If you don't want to use a dark stride or if you want to spend your points in your tree in um, in your void cleave tree and take the, the two charges from there, you can run the citadel boots as well. That that'll put you at 100 percent that that might help so far. This has worked out for me. I would say strength or vitality, health, percentage health. I got armor on this one, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Omnis, good old classic Omnis. I actually found one with LP. Still can't find a 2 LP Titan Heart, but I found a 1 LP Omnis. I I would go for Critical Strike Multiplier on here, but a Void Penetration is pretty good too. That or Health. Health is always good. <laughs> health is always good. Uh, so this one is probably the second biggest change. Apathy's Maw. If you guys remember my um, other build guide, my original build guide, or actually technically my second build guide, the updated one, we did Critical Strike Multiplier and uh, Armor Shred because we had a 2 LP Apathy's Maw. I've only ever found one 2 LP Apathy's Maw this cycle, and when I slammed it, we got Armor Shred, but nothing else. So what we did here is uh, we took... We took, uh, you know, all the, the, the standard stuff to get your, um, your base crit up on your abilities for both a racing strike and void knight. So instead of taking this stuff that we took over here on a racing strike, we went up this side of the tree, grabbed the critical strike multiplier, grabbed the base crit chance, and we did not take obliterator since we it's not 100 percent, but it's near 100 percent when you have a t7 like max out melee critical strike chance uh it's a little bit different the damage is really nice and consistent because now you're creating with just about all of your abilities i mean except for vengeance but who cares about that that was never about damage that was about survival i think this works out just fine uh the one thing that, that I am missing, though, is that an armor shred. So I say you could either go what I'm doing in this build, this cycle, melee critical strike chance. If you can, get some armor shred on there. Or if you just want to go giga chad, put melee critical strike chance and critical strike multiplier on there. But I'd say either choose one or the other and try and get armor shred on there because that will help a decent amount. But still, we're doing uh, a decent amount of damage with this. Uh... Biggest complaint I had before with Shattered Chains is uh, I didn't have Cleanse. I've rectified that. Dark Stride. Uh, if you guys remember in the previous video, I had a start Dark Stride with Vitality, a low Vitality roll. Got T7 movement speed on here. We move fast. 99% movement speed. Th this is a fast build when you got that on there. But like I said, it's not required. Makes the build feel nice. With this one, uh, before I had uh, an Anchor of Oblivion with that 40% endurance, I did have this rain that had 15% endurance. I had some endurance stuff somewhere else. So for the most part, you're looking for like strength and vitality. Uh, look, now that we're actually needing to generate some crit, critical strike chance and health, those are your biggest ones. This siphon is kind of a wash, but it had a T6 critical strike chance on there. So... I've kept it. I haven't messed with it. Uh, gloves, critical strike chance. Melee attack speed just makes it feel better, but you can go for something else. Strength, vitality, whatever. Chance to apply frailty is nice. You could also, if you really wanted to try and min-max it, maybe get like a, a, a T1, like, like just a tier 1 frailty, and then seal it, and then put on uh, armor shred and get that up to tier 5. And then we got this real nice T6 hybrid health. 
the gloves they're they're obviously a change from before but not really it's armor and armor mitigation also applies to damage over time now if you're if you're really good with what you're doing and you know the glyph of insight system really well or you use a third party app which i don't even mess with glyphs of insight you can honestly get even more armor mitigation also applies to damage over time but for the most part eternal gauntlets are probably best in slot for this kind of build all right we've gone over the reins uh anchor of oblivion this is an all-time classic you get this from uh admiral harton uh let's let's move on over to the idols idols are really simple health 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 you might be wondering well what happened because in your previous build you were using you know echo chance uh, uh you know uh when when an ability echoes you do extra damage you get extra damage here you get extra armor here you get damage 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 in order to keep pushing past where I was with the gear that I had and the fact that I didn't have a 2LP Titan Heart that I could put on extra strength and all that, I just needed effective HP. I needed survivability. So I stuffed a whole bunch of health on here. And I think that was the right call. I think it was the right call. I was able to push more and I was able to actually, I was kind of hitting a wall at 570 corruption. I've, I've been able to push to 611 corruption. We could probably go higher, but we're going to be transitioning towards a different build. I, that's why I'm making the video. I just want to have a little snapshot in time here in the cycle just to show you guys. So yeah, yeah. This is the whole setup. Okay, let's jump into the skills. Uh, very pretty much standard. I, I'm... 99.5% sure that I set this up the exact same way. You're, you're mostly looking for bolster, reposite, attack speed, uh, not reposite, repost, <laughs> repost. Uh, the dark duelist is a really good one. Uh, you need to put at least four points in here to get another repost because of that damage reduction. But nonetheless, I would put all five points into here because they've changed it from the original from like how it was in beta where it gave you an increased 100% damage. This is a global more damage. It's multiplicative with other modifiers, 20%. Vengeance still, I I would say, is the king. I mean, it's still a tight window. You, you only got two seconds after you land that first vengeance, but it really keeps you alive. Void Cleave. Uh, Void Cleave is essentially the same, except we didn't take Obliterator, and I just put my extra points in these two nodes right here, Abyssal Walker, uh, Into the Depths. Uh, if you have, a, and then of course we took Gravity's Edge, uh, Frame Strikes, uh, Dark Pathway for cooldown reduction, Resonating Cleave, this allows us to cast Abyssal Echoes when we use void cleaves when you use void cleave abyssal echoes will go out and for whatever reason it counts it as you casted abyssal echoes we'll get into that when we get into abyssal echoes in case you're like what are you talking about there were some questions in my previous video so yeah void cleave still pretty much set up the exact same way i had before except for uh except we're not taking obliterator before i had two points here in crushing echo but i decided to put those into abyssal walker and into the depths just nice little multiplicative uh modifiers to roll with let's go on over to abyssal echoes still relatively set up the same we took turbulence and myopi to to get the blind uh turbulence you need to take turbulence to get the blind when enemies are blinded with embrace the darkness it grants you nether coating here's the thing that that people were asking about they're like well it says directly using abyssal echoes grants you nether coating well here's the thing in game i i was paying attention i would use it and there it is right there nether coating buffs from abyssal echoes Let's take a look again. Well, yeah, another coating. It's right there. Uh, it, it says the buffs right there, so I'm I'm gonna take it. <laughs> it gives us a twenty percent uh, damage increase against enemies that are blinded and a twenty percent attack speed buff. Well, we have another coating. There you go. That's that's all I can say. <laughs> the three stacks of slow. 
Uh, Void Supremacy is literally the main reason why I'm using Abyssal Echoes and not something like Anomaly. This this more damage against slowed enemies, this this thing cooks. Like you can definitely tell when and it like when you cast Void Cleave and your Abyssal Echoes goes out, you can tell when you're attacking an enemy that didn't get hit by the slow. It's like my damage fell off a cliff. This thing helps out so much. But I mentioned Anomaly because Anomaly is a good choice. I, I would still take Abyssal Echoes, but you could also take Anomaly. You can drop this unspec rebuke that I, uh, we have on the skill bar. It's, it's completely unspec, you know, because Void Cleave is casting the um, Abyssal Echoes for us. We can put an unspec rebuke. This is saving my butt a whole lot of times. If you decide to drop Abyssal Echoes, you could take Anomaly. Uh, definitely take the bubble. You're going to want to take like the crit chance. Just to ensure you have a 100% crit chance. You can even f uh, free up some of your gear if you do that. Maybe not having to push for critical strike chance. In these three places, you can free it up with something else more interesting. I don't know what that'd be, but it, you can go ahead and do that. Have the bubble follow you, and then you could focus on this node right here. Enemies, um, enemies that are in the void bubble will take more it will take 100% void damage. Uh, I believe that's an increase, not a more multiplicative modifier. That's why I would opt for this. Plus, the slow is a huge thing. Being a melee build, if you activate this and you, into a big group of enemies, you bring the hammer down. You don't necessarily kill everybody. Well, you can start to run away. And then all the enemies are like... And then you can just turn around, slash again. Boom. There you go. There you go. Uh, Racing Strike, this one is a little bit different. We opted for one additional charge. Uh, the Void Shred Chance with a, uh, a Racing Strike is nice. Uh, dust to Wind, uh, Racing Strike and Void Rifts, it creates a deal damage in a larger area. I just needed the two points to get down to there. Took four points in Merciful. You could put two points here in Merciful and then put more points in Erasure of the Living. This... I could definitely feel this missing because I would run five points in here and then I'd put the rest of my points in Ruthless um, before because I wasn't running three points in Profits Onslaught and uh, two points in Certain Erasure. I would run all my points in Erasure of the Living and the rest right here because it was a Critical Strike Multiplier build because Erasing Strike was already a guaranteed crit. I can definitely feel the the this not here, but um, I would still push for Merciful because of the cooldown reduction. Uh, five points in Obliteration. I'm technically you could take some points out of here and put it into Erasure of the Living, but this is such a huge amount of flat melee void damage. I'm gonna say. Please don't do it. <laughs> I mean, it only applies to a racing strike, but that's a huge amount. You're talking about 60 flat? Keep it. Put three points just to get that base crit chance up and two points for certain erasure for that critical strike multiplier. Good, good, good. Uh, pretty much the most standard uh, volatile reversal. Oh, one thing I forgot to point out, uh, in case you guys weren't aware... Or maybe you missed it. Omnis gives us a plus one. So that's why I have 21 and everything and a 24. Okay, so we have gone over uh, the gear, the idols. Let's go ahead and take a look at the blessings. Not much has changed. Let's just use this map. Not much has changed. Uh, one thing I did is uh, I, I started trying out just using the gold drop rate. I think this works out very well as opposed to the unique drop rate. But again, this is personal preference. You can do gold. You could do unique. You can do idols, whatever you're looking for in this blessing. I will say the gold drop rate. Uh, it, it's pretty good for somebody who's not a merchant's guild. <laughs> I've gotten a lot more gold since then. And I'm not really missing the the, the unique drops. As much as I thought I would. So, yeah. If you need some gold, Grand Scales of Greed is a good choice. Uh, Grand Slumber of Mordai. This is literally 
preferential. Uh, relics are good. It, it really helps if you have a plus three uh, a void cleave. So you could go for that, but whatever you're looking for. This one, one handed swords. I run out of the builds. Excuse me. You could put two handed axes in there. Uh, Follow the Empire. Whatever you're looking for. I chose prefix shards. Uh, let's go get over to the good stuff. Um, so in my previous build, I was running um I was running void resistance shred. I feel like now I get enough shred from erasing strike and void cleave, because they got two charges each. That the the only targets that really needed the shred were the bosses, and I can generally maintain almost a hundred percent ten stack uptime with those. So I've opted for critical strike multiplier. Uh, if you can get yourself a, a cool 40%, that's awesome. I got 38%. Feels pretty good. Moving on. Ending the storm. So this one, I might actually change. So I put lightning resistance because that's pretty much just kind of like the standard resistance that you put in place. But, um, that is kind of like the standard blessing you put in place. If you're not running like some sort of specialized build, uh, you could go mana. Mana, mana is cool. Uh, but the one I think I'm going to go try and check out is the health regen because we're not using Titan Heart, which, you know, you do not regenerate health with when you're wearing Titan Heart. Since I'm using Champion Regalia, that, that new blessing for the um, for health regeneration could be a nice addition here. I haven't tried it out, but I, I might try and go for it. But nonetheless, uh, Bashing of Divinity is still... A decent choice in this uh, regard. So we're not going uh, str critical strike avoidance. That in all my builds, I used to own this slot right here. But right now, grand resolve of humanity. Uh, this goes all the way up to twenty percent. Get yourself one of those. Mix it in with a uh, with a nice rolled omni. Most of your resistances are taken care of. If you're using Leonines, if you're not using Leonines, I would probably recommend, even if you're using a different pair of boots, unless you're using fiery dragon shoes, which I don't know why you would be, but nonetheless, it's there. I would use the critical strike avoidance and then, you know, throw like a 30% on your ring or something. Uh, so spirits of fire, if you do not have a, um, if you do not have an anchor of oblivion, you could take, and this is what I did for a while until I got an anchor of oblivion. You could take for this node, you can take the uh, blessing that gives you endurance. That's how I was able to get my endurance capped. I took that instead of armor, but after I got an anchor of oblivion, which automatically just on its own endurance caps, you, you can go ahead and just take a grand body of obsidian flat armor. It's very nice age of winter. 46% increased armor, Grand Bulwark of the Tundra, highly recommend it. Uh, other ones you could put in place here, uh, I don't know, whatever you want. If you don't want to take increased armor, I opted for increased armor. And then Grand Memory of Masters, this is the uh, the class-specific shard drop rate. Anybody who's been by the streams or seen my videos, I hate, hate, hate this cat. I, I hate this dude. Uh, Elder Gaspar. Absolutely hate him. I get I do the bare minimum to get whatever blessing, and then I move on. You can go for whatever you want. I chose class-specific drop rates. There we go. Okay, last thing we got is the passive tree. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. One moment, please. Okay. And we are back. Passive tree. Oh my gosh. I never even noticed. I had one unspent point. Let's just put it right there and I'll explain that one later. Uh, okay. So I put eight points in juggernaut just for the fire and void resistance because uh, where is my character sheet? I This is going to be depending on whether or not you need uh, strength or vitality or your resistances. If you don't need these here. If you got really good Omnis and you got the the, the all resistance, uh, whatever, you could actually put more points into Vitality, get yourself that health regen, especially if you're not using Titan Heart. 
The, this could be a better play in the end. I might even change that for me personally, but I'm going to keep it like this just because the, the idea of the build was it was a Titan Heart build. But nonetheless, Vitality or Strength. There you go. I usually go 8-2 or 8-2. You could even go 4-4. Four, four. Uh, you could even go 6-4. Whatever. It's 10 points. Put 5 points in Armor Clad. This one's almost a guaranteed locked in. 5 points in Valiant Charge. 5 points in Time and Faith. This one. Uh, if you see my gameplay before, just the, the sheer amount of mana gain you get. And you don't need to be hitting enemies. You can just be regenerating this. Let me demonstrate this. So there we go. No mana. We got mana. You, you don't even need to be hitting enemies. You just get your mana back. So time and faith, I think, is a good one. You could put it somewhere else, I I guess. <laughs> I'd say take time and faith. This right here, if you wanted to, you could take five points out of Blade Master and... Heck, for that matter, five points out of time and faith. Just keep it at 20 points and put it elsewhere. But personally, Blade Master makes the build feel better. Since we regenerate mana back, this is already slow. You start taking those points out, you start taking away that melee attack speed. Uh, brother, sister, person, this is gonna, this is just not gonna feel as good. Yes, we don't use Vengeance for, um, we we don't use vengeance for the for the damage but believe me it just feels nice just getting your mana back relatively quickly and also just maintaining that uptime on the on the bolster node for vengeance so that's why i do that it makes the build feel better but if not go wild all right and then we put all 83 points uh yeah 83 extra points into void knight so let's go over them real quick uh put all 10 points into abyssal endurance uh the health is a really good gain here but you could take points out here and then you know maybe shove them somewhere else if you wanted to uh i just generally am so used to taking 10 points here in abyssal endurance but if you feel like you got the resistances and you're not going to be missing the health feel free to uh mess around put two points in temporal corruption just to get to the eight points in void blades world eater for the for the leech one point here this one's important for the uh critical strike multiplier eight points in doom knight uh, three points in finality just for the the kill threshold and uh, the increases to melee void damage i still kept the four points in woe i think it's good enough but uh we could put this in other places if we'd like excuse me my, my nose kind of itches right now 10 points in eternal form just for that vitality and that health increase it is it is very nice uh i guess you could take the four four points out of woe and put it into void agus if you would like that way this could give you another form of damage reduction but it breaks after you take 100 damage so i haven't used it before you could go have fun with it uh and then these points right here it's basically all about that echo chance five points for echo chance uh this one gives us more melee attack speed and guess what echo chance and then one point here for even more echo chance but we lose attack speed and mana costs if you remember in my previous build i did not take this before and i i, I could see why i did it because the reduction in the attack speed but i had enough attack speed in this build compared to the previous one that i I felt like I could justify the avatar regret and the, the increased echo attack. Like, I mean, that's extra damage right there. So I say, if you got enough melee attack speed and it feels nice, take avatar regret. And then we put all 15 points into dread for increased void damage and movement speed. All right, guys, uh, that is the entire build. That is the blessings, the gear, the idols, everything, the video. Well, a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but uh, we're going from there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this update. And yeah, we will probably do another video on this in cycle two just to see if this build still holds up. 
nonetheless i'm babbling bike thank you for watching please feel free to hit like uh subscribe if you like my content and i uh, hope to see you guys in the next one or in the live streams anyway you guys take care